What is good for you watching at home? You don't know that was the third time we tried that. Uh, also, my dude. Finally nailed it. Got a fresh crack. We got your boy Austin Abbott over there. What's good? How you doing, bud? What's up, brother? How you doing, man? Oh, no, I'm just excited to be here. We got a real rookie mock with or a real rookie draft, rather, for your pleasure here. Uh, and this is a real money league. This is a Patreon league. $150 buy-in, so we wanted to come bring you the straight facts on how this one broke down a little bit, some of the trades that went down, give you an idea of, of uh, some value on some trades, whether you like it or not. This is a real league, and this is how it went. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to kind of cruise through this thing and tell you what we like, what we didn't like, and, and some trades. So you ready to roll? Let's do it, man. All Shout right. out to uh, Stu Finer, the GOAT, just before we start, but all right, I'm ready. All, all right. right, let's do it. So right off the rip, oh boy, we got Caleb Williams, we got Marvin Harrison, we got Malik Neighbors, we got Jaden Daniels. So, you know, the first four, not really a shocker at this point. I think that's pretty standard. Sometimes Jaden Daniels, you know, could slide up there into the three. Sometimes Neighbors goes four, but that's kind of the way I've been seeing it break down, right? I mean, that's nothing, nothing really to to talk about there, right, Austin? I mean, yeah, yeah, I'm I'm ready to move on. <laughs> All right, with except for this rookie draft kit, look at that thing. Uh, look at that, it's nice. Come over to the Patreons, come get some of that. All right, and then so one five, that was us. We had uh, we had the one five. We took Drake May there. We are rebuilding, so. We are. We have basically no quarterbacks on the roster at Losers. this point outside of Russell Wilson. Um, so we're we're in the rebuilding phase of things. Talked about taking Roma Dunze here. We talked about taking Brock Bowers here. This is super flex tight and premium. I'm sorry, I should have let off with that. Um, but you know, as if you've been tuning in, you should know that's pretty standard. But I should have should have let off with that. But so a lot of lot of conversations here. We were trying to you know trade down a little bit. Couldn't really get anything anybody to bite anything that was worth kind of trading down four so we also owned uh the 108 and the 111 in this draft i'm fine with taking drake may for me personally i like drake may too much shade being thrown on drake may's way um i don't i Look hope he doesn't him. start right away i hope jacoby Brissett takes this takes this team uh for a little while but I, I have a lot of confidence in drake may i think he's really athletic i think that gets overlooked at 880 rushing yards um, he's got the big body on him. He's 6'4", 223. He's still really, really young. He's he's had some big-time uh, collegiate production, fell off a little bit this past year. But, you know, the team around him fell off a little bit. So I think that's to be expected. So I'm, I'm fine with taking Drake May here. Uh, Casey, Jason, I got a question for y'all. What you got? If Jaden Daniels was there, would you have taken Jaden Daniels? Over Drake May? Yes, if both quarterbacks, I would have traded. I would have traded back, and somebody would have wanted. I would, the market would have been a lot hotter. I would have traded back, but I like mm -hmm. I like Drake May more than I like Jaden Daniels. Okay, um, I think Jay. fantasy wise, Jaden Daniels is, can come out of the gate hot because of the rushing upside, and you got to love that. But I think Drake May's got his own rushing upside as well, with a little more girth uh, behind him, <laughs> um, and he's gonna he's gonna have some nice little sneak in touchdowns, I believe. Just the tip. Um, Jaden Daniels is probably going to come out and start it right away. Some people aren't going to like that, I, you know, but that's that's where I'm at. I'm just being being honest. So keeping it moving here. J.J. McCarthy goes one six to me. That's got to be, you know, Roma Dunze next. And I am and, and premium. I'll probably take Brock Bowers next. Um, but J.J. McCarthy has certainly worked his way into the seven eight spot for me. Where, where have you <laughs> fallen at this point? been a minute since we talked about it mccarthy udunze brock bowers uh austin yeah so i'm admittedly lower on jj mccarthy he's my 108 in super flex you know rookie drafts i candidly would have taken brock bowers and roma dunze ahead of him um like we can look back in a few years and say jj mccarthy was the right pick if he were to hit hypothetically and you know go on to have a lot of success in the nfl all things considered, like uh, my evaluation on him, the film, the analytics, everything that I know about J.J. McCarthy as a prospect, I, I don't like him enough to take him that early. Yeah. If, you know, it, that, that's just me, man. And we'll, we'll see when we, you know, this is going to be so much fun to look back on in a year, two years, three years. We'll see how J.J. McCarthy pans out. But I like Brock Bowers and Rome way too much as a prospect to pass up on them here. 
Yeah, I, I, I would I would tend to agree. I get it. I like this. I like where McCarthy landed. He's he's I am with you, though. He's oh, not, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's not my favorite player. Um, I think he's fine. I think the system that they're in and the and the quarterback or the head coach there to develop him, I think he's in good hands um, and, and makes him have a better shot. I think Sam Darnold should also start uh, for them for, you know, half the season, even maybe the whole season. You know, who knows? I don't hate J.J. McCarthy by any means. I just I feel like it's gotten a little too aggressive. And I, I, I just love uh, I put it this way. I love Roma Dunze and I love Brock Bowers. And, you know, I'm I, I, I'm OK with, you know, potentially missing on McCarthy. Um, if it wasn't premium, then I would have McCarthy over Bowers. Um, but with a little bit of premium, Bowers is, is has potential to be one of those top five, top three tight ends. Might, might not be that much fun for, for year one, but this is dynasty. We have to look past some of that. We've, we've had so many guys go to so many situations that you thought stunk, and then all of a sudden you were like, oh, damn, he's still really good. That situation turned mm-hmm. around a lot faster than I thought. So McCarthy goes 106. Roma Dunze goes 107. Brock Bowers goes 108. That was our next pick. Uh, we were kind of in talks of swapping up to maybe get Rome there, but didn't want to pay a whole lot. This is tight end premium. Uh, we do have Kyle Pitts on this team, but figured, fuck it, let's go, let's go, Brock Bowers. Um, I'm not opposed to playing in tight end premium, playing two tight ends, one in my tight end spot, one in my flex spot if the volume's there. Um, and Devontae Adams isn't going to be around forever in Vegas. And then after that, who's the guy who's getting the target share? Maybe it's Brock Bowers. It probably it's Brock Bowers, uh, if I had to guess. Uh, right. So we need to not be so short sighted sometimes when we talk about some of this stuff. And I know it's easy. I just feel like there's also, you know, the, the, a big there's a, l- dynasty continues to grow and redraft crowd comes over and you know people are just impatient. Um, so, you know, I like Brock Bowers a lot. The, 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 here's the thing with Brock Bowers. You, you have to just like any of these sort of tight ends like this. I like that, you. That Brock Bowers uh, kind of is. He has to go to the right system and the people have to use him correctly. And that, that goes kind of with with almost any player. Um, Cause Brock Bowers isn't going to be your traditional tight end, right? You gotta, you gotta do other things. You gotta get creative with him. He's basically a wide receiver uh, who can do so many things from a pass catching perspective, uh, but you have to be creative and smart and, and use him to the best of his ability. So that could be a little bit of stumbling block for block for Brock Bowers. I'm not terribly confident in the, in how the Raiders are use him, but I do like uh, Antonio Pierce uh, as in general. So surprising to, to keep that job. I liked it. Yeah. All right, let's keep it moving here. Uh, we got 109 coming in at Xavier Worthy. We got Jonathan Brooks, who has been on fire. There hasn't been a, a, a profile or a profile and a and a a player gaining more steam and more traction than Jonathan Brooks. I don't think, right? I think that's pretty accurate. I have him at 111 in my rankings. Where did he go here? 110. So uh, this this was appropriate. Um, I, I don't mind reaching on him even to pick earlier. I think Jonathan Brooks is uh, – here's what I'll say. it, Man, if you won the championship this year, this this may be the best year ever. To, if you were weak at the running back position, like this is kind of the perfect storm, right? Because not only did you get a ring, but yes, you have a late first, and you could land a Jonathan Brooks or a Trey Benson. It's like – you know, it's it's interesting. All these wide receivers are obviously, you know, it's a stacked class. They're pushed up early, but but these two running backs, man, they were they were very attainable. And like Casey, you mentioned, Jonathan Brooks, yes, his ADP is continuing to increase, but he, he's still attainable. Like you can still go get him for at the 110, 111, 112. I think Jonathan Brooks may start out a little bit slower this season. And uh, if there's any GM out there, anybody that's panicking because he's not producing at a high level or just not on the field at a very high rate, like I would be all over buying Jonathan Brooks early on this season, man. But I I, I like this pick. Uh, I like, you know, I thought Worthy was a little early. Did did that surprise you? Um, I I just I want to I want to mention I have Brian Thomas Jr. ahead of Worthy in my rankings. And, uh, no, I, I, how do you I, how do you feel about that? Oh no, I I mean I'm I got Xavier Worthy as as the next wide receiver after Rome. Uh, so and I, I feel okay. like in in the you know I don't know five eight rookie drafts that I've gone through so far, it typically is Xavier Worthy as the next wide receiver off the board that I see. I'm not saying that makes yep. me right or wrong, just that's typically. Uh, kind of what what I end up seeing. So not so no not not a huge surprise here. I did want to double back. We're at one ten. That was one of the first you know where there was some other trades up here, but there were players involved, and I mostly wanted to try to stick to 
draft pick trading. So 110 got traded back to 23 and he picked up the 28. Hey guys, a quick reminder to head over to patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free Discord channel. Or hit your boys with the $5 holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, and also our 2024 Rookie Draft Kit, complete with rookie rankings, ADP, and player pages. All for your pleasure. 110 moved back to 2-3, picked up a 2-8. Uh, and, and the guy who came up at the 110 was a rebuilding team from a year ago who is now in full-on, hey, I'm going for it. Uh, and he is a dynasty football key there. He has a YouTube channel. Go check that out. You know, I thought that was a good move for him. He came up and, and got Brooks. You know, he's, he's been rebuilding. He had some ammunition left over, so he went right up uh, and, and grabbed Brooks there. What do you think? 110, 2328? That seems like a fairly standard issue trade there. So, so that was Jonathan Brooks for Michael Penix Jr. and A.D. Mitchell. A.D. Mitchell? Right. Okay. When you put it that way. Let yeah, me I mean, obviously, you have no idea how it's going to break down right, when you yeah. make those trades. Right. But fairly common in the, you know, recipient back picking up an extra second to move back a couple of picks. The, the value on that trade, a 2-8 to move right. your 2-3 up five spots is pretty on par. That, that's basically, yeah. Yeah. But when it turned into Michael Penix, I I hate seeing Michael Penix go. Uh, not on my team. <laughs> like, I'm, I, I didn't yeah. know I was going to feel that way. Yeah. But I'm like, what are we doing? It's like cheap money. Yeah. It, I mean, it it really just comes down to what what does Penix do do right? Obviously, that's uh, right. the he biggest part of this trade. You wait, it's dynasty. That's why he's yes. If he was the starter, yes. he wouldn't be going in the second round, right? And that's short sighted. That's short sighted. Yeah. I mean, I love get, I love getting Brooks. I love getting your guy. I love getting the RB one in this class. So good on good on him. But I also love getting Penix, man. It's tough for me to give a definitive answer, uh, and I'm not even going to say like who won, who lost. I just want to point out like when we look back two, three years from now. We see what what's going on with Penix, what's going on with A.D. Mitchell. Uh, we'll be able to, you know, just have a better evaluation on this trade. Uh, in terms of value, though, I, I think the team that got Penix and A.D. Mitchell, like the value is there, man. The value is absolutely yeah. there. Um, but I'm never going to be mad about landing Jonathan Brooks. So yeah. you want to keep it moving, man? Yeah. So we were up next at, at 111. So this this conversation came down to Lad McConkey, Trey Benson, uh, and Michael Penix Jr. here. Um, obviously, these idiots didn't we, take Penix. We could have taken Michael Penix here. You know, the effort the effort was was to try to get back in the top of this into the second round. We couldn't couldn't really get any traction to trade back. So what we were we were going to try to buy buy back into this round. We weren't able to do so. Uh, but we went with Lad McConkey there. Listen, you could take Michael Penix there, but at at one eleven, and I don't really have a problem with that. I, I you know I don't mind that at all. But Lad McConkey is going to come out right away, and I think just be a really right big, off the rip, really right away, uh, <laughs> and 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 just see a really big value increase. I like Lad a lot. There's the target competition is pretty low around there. Lad seems to fit in in exactly kind of how they want to operate and what they want to do. And Lad comes out first four weeks and and sees you know five to seven targets a game and and scores a couple touchdowns and. You know, now you can probably go get Michael Penix plus for Lad McConkey if you really wanted to off the team who who drafted Michael Penix. It, you know, and maybe maybe that team has no interest in trading him. But basically, on this rebuilding team, sure, I could have taken Penix, and I'm I'm okay with that. But I I, I took the what I thought could be the instant gratification, the instant value rebound, and then we could move on um, and and go find something else that we potentially want or keep Lad McConkey if we if we like him. I got Lad in a lot of places. Should have just taken Penix. That's kind of the way I view that. You know, Penix Penix really isn't going to improve in value. If if anything, he'll stay neutral or lose value. Lad McConkey has a really good chance to rise up two rounds uh, very quickly, uh, being attached to Herbert and Harbaugh. And, and I just think the big role he's going to play on that offense. So, Austin, what's your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, you said it best. Lad McConkey, I think there's a strong chance that he's a positive ROI right away. And, you know, you look at Michael Penix Jr., even though he's a good prospect, he's a player that we do like. In reality, man, when we look back six months from now, God willing that, you know, Kirk Cousins is healthy and performing at a pretty decent level, you know Michael Penix Jr. You know that his ADP is going to drop. You, you know it for a fact. The only way it rises is if, is if Kirk Cousins goes down. That that's the only chance that that his immediate value rises. So 
I, I think you're spot on, Casey. Yeah, I mean, the reason we weren't able to get back in there is because the Kirk Cousins team did take Penix, so he probably will not want to get rid of, in this scenario, probably will not want to get rid of uh, Michael Penix Jr. So What's crazy is that this is a team we all three share, and we were on the clock, and I believe that both me and Big Co were like, let's just take Penix, but we left it up to you. And then you didn't take your guy. You took Lad. I was mind blown. Yeah, I mean, like I said, that's that's the like, that's and his the argument rationale. was that's the value pick, right? Because Michael Penix doesn't have that value, and according to like you know ADP and stuff. But like when you're in this situation and you have this tier of guys, whether you have the one eleven or the two three, it doesn't matter. Get your guy. Like we should have definitely taken Penix. It well, gets. well, that's that is my guy though. Lad McConkey is my guy there. Like that's sure. the value of taking. That's that that is the guy. That's what I'm saying. Like that's the guy you take right there because Michael Penix. Almost every time goes two three two four. Where Lad McConkey almost never makes it out of the first round. So, and and you're just you're just gonna get a potential of of value bump and adjustment and getting so much more for that pick so much faster uh, that you know in in this situation then you know I have no problem buying McConkey and and selling um, quickly or just holding on to hey all all of a sudden I got a top. 24 receiver uh, which is you know currency in super flex quarterback then wide receiver and if the wide receiver is trending high and people are into it and liking it and liking the chargers then people are going to be so so interested in in lad mcconkey so that's kind of the rationale there though then we got trey benson at at 112 and that pretty much wraps up the first round so maybe trey benson a hair high for some people but brian thomas kind of floating around we just did a video league winners talking about brian thomas he seems to be the fall guy right now whereas brooks is the rising kind of guy this is what i've been seeing throughout rookie mocks in general to lead off the second round we had two one go as bo Nix. so before michael Penix. um so that's a that's a nice pick there we got bo Nix going at, at two one so that that makes you really excited if you're sitting in that two two spot right because all of a sudden you probably had brian thomas rated ahead of him if you're guys like me in austin uh, and then you're like, oh, oh man, this pick either A, just got way more valuable because somebody took Bo Nix there, or I'm super excited because now I get my guy at 2-2. Uh, at two -two. So the 2-2 two -two got sold for 2-10 and 2-11. So he basically got two late round seconds to move out of this spot. So once again, the rebuilding team Dynasty Football Key comes up and makes a really strong move here and goes ahead and grabs Brian Thomas. You know, I don't I don't necessarily know that I would move make that move right there to move back. I just feel like if I want Brian, you know, and maybe maybe he needs, uh, you know, more than that, which which in the end of the day, the team that traded back is 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 does need, you know, a little bit more than than just one player. Uh, so what's your thoughts here on the value of the 2-2 and, and the trade, Austin? I think Brian Thomas Jr. is probably at least so far, but probably the best value in this in this entire draft that we're reviewing, man. Um, he goes here, the two, two. So this is pick 14. I have him at, at the one Oh nine. So that, that's a big difference. I don't really understand why Brian Thomas jr. Is falling that much. I, I would be ecstatic, man, to, to land him at the two, two, uh, you know, I, I think Brian Thomas jr. Should go before Bo Nix. I, I understand the logic. I get it. You know, quarterback, we're playing super flex. He's the 12th overall pick, draft capital there, collegiate production. I, I understand the argument for Bo Nix. I just, again, similar to J.J. McCarthy, don't love him as a prospect, and I really like Brian Thomas Jr. as a prospect. H how are you not happy with this, man? Yeah. Like, like Casey, the first thing you let off was, you know, Brian Thomas Jr. like falling. Like, like this is this is, you know, about... As far as he does fall, though, I would yeah. say I, yeah, yeah, I, I yeah. don't. I don't know if I've seen him even fall to two two. To tell you the truth, and if I have it, it this is this is about it though. This is a fire value. Yeah. Well, how about the two ten two eleven? You sticking and picking, or are you making that move back? So it, yeah, you said it was the two or two for two ten two eleven. Yeah. Right. Um, so that turned into man, you know, Jatavian Sanders and Troy Franklin. Yeah. Which, both of those players, I felt like, were probably a reach in that spot. If I'm if I'm trading back there, um, let me get Brian Thomas. Yeah, you know, that's probably that might be Polk and Burton for me. Still, let me get Brian Thomas in that spot. Good trade, um, but yeah, I I, thought, I think that's a good come up. So yeah, my thought process with without knowing who the three players were, j just based off the picks two o two four two ten two eleven, my gut 
instantly tells me give me the two two right and at this point like early second i don't want to call it a dart throw pick but like we're starting to get to that range where it's like yeah we're not certain that this player is going to hit and then once we get to like that two two ten two eleven it's like all right man like you really have to do your due diligence you really i, I don't want to say you have to get lucky at this point but like you have to be very confident in the prospect and and there's got to be a lot of variables that are working their way maybe it's the landing spot as well um, but but yeah, on the surface, I, I would candidly prefer the two two. And then now that I see the results, Brian Thomas Jr. for you know, uh, was it Franklin Troy Franklin and and, 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 and Sanders? Sanders. It's tight yeah, and premium, and, but I think those are reaches on both of those guys. Put anybody in those spots, I'd rather have Brian Thomas. Yeah, I, Jay, I think that's a really good point, man. And like, even if someone who I who I like, like Blake Corm, if he were to fall to the two ten in this situation, um, even if it was like Jermaine Burton, just just Jalen Polk, whoever it is, man, I still think I would probably lean Brian Thomas Jr. So whoever sitting in there at the two, two, man, good for you. Yeah. He's uh he's had a lot of capital. He's, he's, he's rebuilt a really good team. So shout out to him. Well, well done, sir. Let's keep it moving here. We got Michael Penix at two, three. We got Ricky Pearsall at Austin Abbott at two, four. We got Keon Coleman at two, five. Uh, and then we come in uh, with Ben Sinnott here at two, six. So, I think all those picks are kind of right on right on par for, for me. I think you hit the nail on the head. You get it. Now you're into the territory. We we still don't know if Brian Thomas, Ladd, Worthy, those guys are all going to hit, but you feel a little bit better about those guys. You start getting into the Pearsall, the Coleman, Leggett, Mitchell. Mm-hmm. I like all those guys. I do. But you're, 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 all those guys have flags, a lot more red flags on their profiles. There's there's holes in some some things uh, you know, kind of along the way here. So all those guys seem less, um, less bulletproof. I'll put it that way. So what are your thoughts here? For the most part, like pretty standard, uh, yeah. nothing, agree, nothing egregious, uh, Ben's Benson it, man. I think this is good value for him, right? This is tight end premium. Mm-hmm. This is a mid mid second. I think this is appropriate. I feel like he's going to be a little bit better than, than what consensus thinks. Um, but, but yeah, man, Man, overall, I, th- I think this was, you know, pretty standard. And then you, Casey, you come around, or you guys come around, Xavier Leggett with the very next pick. You want to? Ha- I see you guys want to have some fun. Yeah, you know, Xavier yeah, Leggett, so, exciting pick. So for me, we had two five and two seven. So we had Coleman, and uh, oh, that's right, right, and Leggett there. I got kind of vetoed on this one. I, I, I would have. I would have made one of these picks, and I would have traded. I would have tried to trade back a little bit and move something else up here. I just feel like, and there are a lot of, both of those guys are really fun, right? And there's a lot of upside there, uh, but they're two of the riskier picks that you can make right here, right? Me and Big Co were sitting out there after like a live mock and you were probably asleep. We were up late and we were on the clock and we were both like, we'll just, we'll just take leg it. Let's go. So we yeah. did out, we did out veto you, but you didn't want to do that, huh? No, I would, I would have, I'm fine with taking, taking a shot on one of those two guys, but I would have wanted to trade back. And, and I, I like Sinnott in that area as well for tight end premium. Obviously we already took Brock Bowers in this draft and we have, we, Kyle, we have Kyle Pitts. Yeah. Well, we could have taken Sinnott. So yeah, Dave, Dave Canales, man, he was talking about Xavier Leggett today. Oh, and or, I like, or, I, I probably would have leaned towards taking Leggett there at seven and trading the five, right? That, mm-hmm. that would have been my preference is trade the seven or trade the five, try to get back in the in the late twos, move something up into the threes or pick up a, a pick next year. Um, because I just kind of like, I feel like some of those guys in the back half of the second, like I mentioned, the Polks and the Burtons, you know, I feel like Burton's like a good upside shot and Polk just kind of has a nice little floor to him, right? Little, little, seems a little safer. Yep. And if I get pick up a little value through there, I'm kind of okay with that. But got vetoed there. So we went Coleman, Sinnott, Leggett, and I like Leggett. You, you were alluding to, coach canal is there on like it yeah i mean he said out of the backfield jet sweeps uh, short crossers you know perimeter screens just down the field posts like there really isn't much else that you know we want from our wide receivers and he said that xavier Leggett does it all he he's done all of those things that i just listed and you know i thought that was pretty i thought that was pretty nice to hear you know right out of the gate from Dave Canales and and I really like him man. he did a fantastic job as the offensive coordinator with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers last season uh I mean if you're a Panthers fan you got to be exciting man I think that I think the Panthers 
I think Bryce Young, man, biggest biggest offseason winner in the NFL, maybe. I'm dead serious. I, I think Bryce is getting a huge upgrade really across the board, and Xavier Leggett is going to play a vital role in that offense. Yeah, Leggett was almost on my league winners there, but you know, I didn't I didn't want to get people too 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 fired up. So, uh, mm -hmm. but I like it, man. I think I think I like I like the prospect of Leggett. I like the landing spot, and I don't hate Keon Coleman either. But um, there was a trade there at two six that I missed. It was. Uh, Two six for two nine and a twenty five third. So that would have been kind of in the range of something that I wouldn't mind kind of seeing us do is kind of move back from five to eight and pick up a third or something. Twenty five third. Maybe try to get a little more. I might try to gain a little more than that. Like maybe maybe move a two. Maybe move my four up somewhere else. Uh, but that's you know. And then either keep moving that back and keep gaining little bits and pieces. Um, so that would have been. But I, I you know I don't, I don't hate that. I thought that was a good move. But somebody came up and grabbed Senate there. Uh, and he fell back to to the two nine. So uh, then we got we got Leggett at two seven. We got A.D. Mitchell at two eight. We got Blake Corm at two nine. Uh, we have Troy Franklin at two ten. Jadavian Sanders two eleven. We thought well, maybe those were a little reachy for us. And then Jalen Wright ending the second round at two twelve. Um, so thoughts on the back half of this before we move on to the third. So I have Jalen Wright at the three oh five. I'm. Uh, Definitely more bearish on him. He goes here at the 212. Um, so that like pretty pretty big gap from my rankings to what happened here. Uh, you mentioned Jatavian Sanders. Man, I have J I have Jatavian Sanders significantly later than this. Uh, I I've kind of cooled down on him. Uh, Troy Franklin, Casey. I th I think you know you're again accurate with this. I I where's Troy Frank? Uh, Troy Franklin's 301 in my rankings. He goes here at the two. 10, 10 yeah. so i mean it's look man it's it's not bad like once you get this late in the draft like now we're mid towards the end of the draft almost it's like this is this is it's fine a little early but hey man we'll look back at a few months and everything's going to change everybody's value is going to change uh how do you feel about blake quorum here at the what was it two eight did he go or two, two nine two nine looks like yeah how do you feel about this uh you know i don't i don't mind it um it's probably a little early for me. I wouldn't mind seeing him kind of in that Jalen Rott's right spot there, 211, 212. Um, but I, I get it. I mean, if you got Kyron, I'm reaching the hell out of Blake Corm and trading him and, up. And, and, mm -hmm. and getting him. Um, but if I don't, I, I also am a big Kyron guy. So if you're not a Kyron believer, uh, then then that's fine. You know, go ahead and get Blake Corm. Uh, we did. We I got did, a lot of problems with you people. We did then see the two nine get moved for three seven, three eleven, four three, and a twenty five third. I believe um, is that trade that we saw there. What was that again? Uh, two nine four. Got it. Um, three seven, three eleven, four three, and a twenty five third. So that was that was the Blake Corum pick right there that you just kind of doubled back on. So traded a bunch of lower end stuff, went up and got himself a, a little two nine. Somebody diversified, you know, a good bit. Um, I don't love that trade. That's a, that's a, you threw a lot of late round stuff in there and, and that 25, three. Um, so you don't love it for the guy that gave up two nine, right? Um, you fell all the way back to three, seven and, and you picked up the 11 and you got a four picked and then up you a got lot a, of things you got, that you can get later easily. Yeah. Um, you don't need so to do that now. I might've looked a little more value, but you know, hey, you get into these drafts and, and you, you're, you're trading around and, and. You know, sometimes the market's up, sometimes the market's down, sometimes the trades coming in and, and trades coming out are hot and heavy, and sometimes you're just scrounging around to get something. So um, th I try not to be too terribly judgy on that, but I, I probably would have deferred and done something else there. So, all right, let's keep this thing moving. At 3 1, we had Marshawn Lloyd. At 3 2, we had Jalen Polk. At 3 3, we had uh, Jermaine Burton. At 3-4, we had Roman Wilson. At 3-5, we had Baker. And then at 3-6, we had Jalen McMillan. Um, so here, we owned uh, our own pick, I believe. And then we came in and we traded for uh, a couple of picks here because we wanted to get our guys. Um, I don't hate Marshawn Lloyd there, and I, I liked Polk sticking around. I was sending offers uh, for the 3-2 to maybe get in there on Polk. Um, but we ended up just buying the 3-3 three, three there for uh, Jermaine Burton for a straight-up 26-2. So not the 25, but a 26-2. Um, so a year from now or two years from now, two, to get in there to grab Burton. Um, and I like that because I, can, I, can, I know by 26 I can find myself another two. 
Uh, then we went Baker, and then we traded in and got ourselves some McMillan here. Um, and that was the 3-6, uh, which we traded a, a 25 third and a 26 third, I believe, um, for that 3-6. So we were able to come in here, get everybody we wanted, Jermaine Burton, Javon Baker, and Jalen McMillan on a rebuilding team. Now we've come in and we've gotten we've got Pearsall, or rather uh, Coleman, Leggett, Lad McConkey, uh, Jermaine Burton, Baker, and McMillan all on kind of a rebuilding team, just getting bullets for wide receivers uh, to make some different moves. What are your thoughts here through one through three through six here, um, Austin? This is, man, this is kind of where the draft gets really interesting to me. Okay. Uh, I'll start with Jalen Polk and I'll be, I'll be short with him. Um, you know, here's a player, seven games last year, a hundred plus yards. Uh, you're getting that value in in the third round. I mean, he did that at Washington, right? Yeah, he was a he was a almost pick. a first round pick, man. He yeah. was almost a first round pick, and you're getting him in the third round. And I, I've said this so many times on the podcast, Casey. Jalen Polk is the wide receiver one for the New England Patriots. It's not even a hot take. Ooh. I I I really believe Jalen Polk was drafted to be exactly that. Like his 37th overall draft capital is not being talked about enough. And for him to go here 302, if there's one player in in all of your rookie drafts that I feel so confident that will beat his ADP this season, it is Jalen Polk. And I'm not saying he's going to go out and be a top 24 wide receiver. I'm not saying he's going to be like even a top 36 wide receiver this year. I just promise you he'll be a positive ROI. And he he's just he's just a hell of a value. Like I have him 205 in my rankings. 302 here. Love that. Next pick, Jermaine Burton, 303. Dude, this is this is very close. Like, as good as I feel about Jalen Polk's value, this is almost on par with it. It's a little bit below fire value. Uh, J- Jermaine Burton, y'all get him at the 303. I'm at the 209. Now, here's a player, Casey. Casey, you've you I think you said it specifically, and and you nailed it. You you were 100 percent accurate on this. When you get this late in drafts, man, you want to take players that have league winning upside. You want to take players that have that real high upside. All right. Jermaine Burton is one of the very few players that checks that box mm. that you can still get at the end of the second, the third, the f- whatever, whatever, wherever, right? Um, I, I think, you know, you got other guys like, I mean, come on, let's be honest, man. I, I like Roman Wilson. I like Javon Baker. I like McMillan. I like Corley. Like, like I like them for what they are. I, I feel very confident when I say this. Jermaine Burton, his upside is higher than all of those players. Yes. So yes. I, I'm with you. Yeah, that's why I was willing to trade the two year from now second because I already have him as a second round grade right now, and I like him in the late second, and I was wasn't afraid to do that. And then you know we just we kind of got in here and get we're able to get our guys. I love Jalen McMillan, and Baker was was big co likes likes Baker, so we were able to kind of compromise. And I don't mind Baker at all, um, but I was was trying to get into that three hundred two to get that couldn't get it done. And then once Burton was still there, same offer uh, coming in, maybe even a hair less. Um, so, all right, let's keep it moving here. Three seven was a trade in, a twenty six second for the three seven and a four three. Um, so, kind of mimicking what we did back there, getting worse value on it. I think. Um, what was that trading on? Um, that was a twenty six second for three seven and four three, I believe. Um, so, you know, kind of coming in, like I said, doing the same kind of similar thing that we did, trading the two year from now second, getting getting yourself. Uh, you know, the three, seven, and, and I like Corley. I don't hate Corley by any means. He's kind of maybe the last guy that you feel really good about receiver wise. I kind of like Luke McCaffrey there, um, but he comes in and trades that in. We got uh, Braylon Allen going three, eight, thought that was a little early, but if I'm not sure if that team has um, Brees, Hall. Brees Hall or not, but if he do, that's fine. If not, then he's got to fall. Spencer Rattler coming in here uh, at three, nine, three, 10, Luke McCaffrey, great pick. Um, I think I think he's going to be the steal of a lot of drafts here and, and really have a nice return on value. Um, this uh, wasn't the 311. 311 was Vidal. Tried to trade in for that one. Tried to trade in for, for Bucky Irving at 312 here too. That was a 25 third. So right at the end, somebody got a next year's three uh, for Bucky Irving. Thoughts on the back half of this third? And then I'm just going to read off the fourth. So yep. give me your yep. final thoughts here on everybody. Um, Kamani Vidal at the 311 Love here. It. Love it. Right. I, I have him ex- I have him at 312. I thought it was spot on, but man, if you, if there if you need a running back, if you need a running back, right? And and you want a promising dart throw, like it makes sense. 
the collegiate pro- production was there. Sure, the draft capital wasn't, but but the landing spot you could argue is is as good as it gets, man. And I know that backfield's you know a little murky. Gus, they got you know J.K., they got you know Vidal, but whoever wins it, man, it's he's going to be he's you know you're going to be sitting pretty. But I these are the type of dart throws I want to take this late, man. A, a guy who could potentially be the the starting running back at the end of the third. I mean, sign me up, man. I'll take that shot all day long. Um, you have. So Corley, I, I want to touch on this trade real quick, then we'll move on. So I thought this sounded really bad. The three seven for a, a three seven for what I'm sorry, what three, was it? Seven, and, three seven and four three for a twenty six second. So I thought it sounded really bad, but when I see that he landed Malachi Corley, he's I have Corley at the two twelve, so really good value getting him at three oh seven. Um we'll see how it pans out. We'll see what that twenty six two turns into, but I think that Corley is the final wide receiver here where I'm like, yeah, you know, I, I yeah. feel like there's a tier, a tier gap after Corley, but Casey, let's move on to the fourth round, man. All right. We got the fourth round. We got your flyers here that you're taking. We got Aldrick Estime going four one. We got Theo Johnson going four two. We got Ray Davis going four three. We got uh, Brandon Rice going four four. Will Shipley four five. Tracy four six. Cowing four seven. Tez Walker four eight. Uh, Whittingham. I believe that's that what it is. Yeah, Jordan Whittington, Jordan Whittington. Whittington sorry. Um, Get it right. Malik Washington, 410. A lot of people are like a little sleeper there for, for Whittington. Uh, is that Texas? Um, like 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 a little sleeper pick for, for Whittington there. Uh, 410 at Washington, 411 Garundo, and 412 Wiley, uh, tight end Kansas City Chiefs. So uh, we took Shipley in the last round at 4-5. Go Tigers. Trying to trade in and get cowing as well. Wasn't able to do so. Shipley's just, you know, hey, take a shot at a running back in the fourth round. I'm not upset about it. But Cowing, Cowing is Cowing and, and Washington are my favorite two shots in the fourth. What are your thoughts here? Fourth round, uh, Austin, and then we'll wrap this up. Yeah, Estime, another guy, like, why not? You know, you see that egregious report that I think is complete garbage that Javante may not make the roster. Yeah. I, and I, hey, man, I'm admittedly lower on Javante. He's going to make the roster. Yeah. I mean, that, it's just a he's not only going to make the roster, he's going to lead that backfield in everything, every fucking category. Uh, I'm sorry. I just had to point that out that yeah. like p- pissed me off the other day. I was like, dude, what we, we are in June, brother. We're in <laughs> June. Um, so estimate just this. is This is again, a, a solid dart throw in the fourth, right? A guy who there's a world that exists where he's the one. I'm not saying it's going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen for a second. I'm just saying this is I don't mind this dart throw in the fourth. Theo Johnson, I like that at 4-2. Um, my boy, the RB1 in this class, the true RB1, Tyrone Tracy. I love this, man. <laughs> I uh, What do you go here? 4 6 six. Man, I, I love Tyrone Tracy. I have – man, I'm probably way too high on him. I have a 309, so getting him at the 4-6. Right. Let's go, man. Sign me up. I uh, – Devin Singletary, guess what, brother? The goat's now in town. Uh, no, but but I like that value. Uh, the rest of this draft, yeah, pretty standard, man. Nothing, nothing, nothing egregious in the fourth round. I thought this was uh, pretty pretty chalk for the most part, you know. Yeah, I got I got uh, we took uh, Garundo at four eleven, got vetoed on that one. I would have probably taken Lob there. Um, yep. Okay. I would have been okay with Ali there. Um, you know, then then there's some other wide receivers. I like Thrash as a as a as a hold for a while. Um, so. I have Garendo a lot higher than Lob in my ranking. So good on you guys. Yeah. I just <laughs> right. he is, he ain't playing for the Niners, bro. I, like, I I'm not. Gonna, they got two good backups. Yeah. Garendo ain't playing. Like yeah. Well, right. CMC's Coming 28, old. man. So let's what's be that? Honest. Yeah, I mean CMC's certainly old. Mitchell's good, and he CMC's doesn't stay healthy. Healthy though. though. Um, and then Jordan Mason. I, the, uh, Good luck beating those guys out. Um, I'm, I'm I'm joking. I'm I'm 100 percent with you. But I, you know, four eleven. I mean, he he's a, a freak athlete. So at four eleven, splash away, whatever. Um, so all right, you let re- Big Covey tell you there. I didn't have a vote. Yeah, there. you know, let's, I didn't care at that point. Let's wrap this thing. Why up. you let Big Cove trump you on your decisions? Just uh, I was I probably I didn't care that much. It's like yeah. it, it's, it's, it's who the hell knows at that point. Um, you Washington better. Washington was my guy would have been my guy right there but he went one pick before uh, so alright make sure you like subscribe comment below all five that star jazz five, hit that five star five review star on Spotify review on the, the iTunes just tap it on the pods 
Make if you sure like you go, those rookie pages, go over to the Patreons. Make you sure you go draft kit. follow Austin Abbott, mm. uh, at Austin Abbott, two B's, two T's, two F's on the Twitters. Please my guy, uh, get my guy over 10K on the subbies over there on the follows. Uh, go go check out Fade Consensus. If he gets to, if he gets 10K, he's going to do a 24-hour straight marathon on the podcast, right? Well, I, th- <laughs> I thought the deal was if we got him 10K before July. I got him 10 or maybe mid July, maybe July. If we get him 10k before July. He'd get the same Ricky Pierce all tattoo on that, <laughs> on that, on that neck. Is that justice, that Mr. Reed? <laughs> no, I'd have got him 10. Oh man, my uh, my mom might kill me. My girlfriend might kill me. So you may ne- never see me on the pod after that. We, we got the third chair right here, yeah. live. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Casa DJ Wayne. Yeah, it's come a on very by. Inviting place. Come on by. Um, come on in. All right, let's get out of here. Five star on the pod. Hit us up on the Patreon to get three extra episodes. We got a little draft kit over there for the rookies. Discord. Uh, there is a free Discord channel too. Free Discord. We're doing mocks on mocks on mocks. We're going to be doing some best ball, real money drafts, like five to twenty bucks throughout the off season. Probably wait until we get into July. Camp That's not dynasty. A That's bit. just a re- just a straight up redraft. Set it. For best it. ball. Set it. Forget it. The Gotta best part is draft. Fun. Yeah. Have some fun. Keep your scratch your itches. Uh, give you give you some guys to uh, join leagues with. Uh, big big player pool there. Uh, so come check us out over there. Uh, we appreciate you, and we'll be seeing you soon in a couple new places. So be sure to check that out. Peace. <laughs>end screen you gotta let it play out so they can see they can click on another video right here just click that video you know click click